next agenda item is our 2016 goal. And some of y'all will turn to that tab in your binders. What you'll see is that uh, staff has put together the short-term goals and the long-term goals. Um, you'll see what those goals were that we have for 2015, 2016. Uh, and this is an updated uh, synopsis of where we're at with them. Um, if you want to go over those, then we'll be more than glad to. I'd like to just kind of start with uh, the solid waste changes that we went through in 2015 that had been accomplished. We currently have two haulers are currently serving in the unincorporated areas of Lannis County. Uh, staff is in the process of preparing a renewal package for advanced disposal and deep south sanitation. Mr. Chairman, uh, along that line, there was a request about changing that insurance requirement. Correct. And so mm -hmm. the new proposal that we will bring to you, that will go from five million to one million charge. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, so then that takes care of that. So we've uh, addressed all of it and hopefully we're in good shape. I'll, I'll tell you from my perspective, maybe you can get you from your perspective. Uh, I think for the most part everybody's very satisfied with where we're at in Lamont County with solid waste right now. Finally got to the end part that fits for this community, and right now I'm working with the community. Oh, yeah, I heard. Some of the legal 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 We do have, and it's uh, on one of our maps, the indications of illegal sites. Um, at the end of the meeting the other day, Gretchen came to me uh, talking about some of the boat landings and how some of those areas are being abused with uh, tires, appliances, etc. So the crew, I spoke with Robin, going in to look at all of those areas, not just the ones that uh, Gretchen talked to me about, but looking at, at all of these and trying to keep a close eye on that. That's one of the issues that code enforcement has been working pretty hard. And, uh, I, I can tell you from just this community and other communities, it seems like that, you know, my entire life and my time here is that Buck landings and dead end roads have always been a target uh, for folks that's going to do the illegal dumping. It's just, it's just goes with it. Um, I hate it, but again, I get the best thing that we can do is, as you're talking about, Robin, step up uh, their policing in those areas and kind of go over the room and just try to make them better than what they are. I do think we have an opportunity, and we can discuss that later if we go through, some opportunity to do some. Citizen education in those areas to kind of maybe help improve that. And with some of the delivery, is it from just county residents? Is it from Bergen County? And if they're not, they're called not. But I've actually worked behind people <laughs> and still talk about it out the window. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, I guess it's the norm where they're, they're from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have to begin to change people. Well, I think that sets in good shape. I will add real quick. I got a call from. I got a call from. Uh, it was a hauler in Newton County, and they're going through the very same thing that we went through mm -hmm. in 2015. They want us to pray. Yeah. Um. Sir, there has been some dialogue about our providers closing.
waste recycling. That is the only opportunity they have right now uh, that if they want to recycle, they can recycle the collection sites. So I think that, that, that we need to continue that. That's a good service to the citizens. The storms that we recently had is a good opportunity uh, for them to be able to utilize those collection sites to take yard debris and those sort of things too. So that needs to stay in the in our franchise. Concerning the landfill, I, I, is there any way that we can talk with them about their fees escalating? You know, our providers have a cap on what they charge, right? Correct. The landfill does not. Well, I don't think you can talk to anybody, Commissioner, but I'm not sure that uh, from a standpoint of a private business whether you can direct them to change the pricing or not. That's, that's a decision that they have to make. Now, the local haulers, uh, whether it be a local hauler here in Lowndes County or whether it's in any of the other surrounding counties that utilize that landfill, they have other options that they can utilize. So that's a decision that they'll have to make, and then that'll, in turn, will create a situation that the landfill owner will have to adjust their strategy as well. Um, I think if it becomes a problem if we continue to monitor it, our haulers here will address that as an issue and then we will have to look at it from the standpoint on the cap if, that, if it comes down to that. Um, but uh, trying to... Well, evidently it's not to the point where they're willing to increase their rates. So they really don't want to increase their rates. Right. They're in that. But what I think we're just concerned about the landfill being able to continue to fill up. And he reaches, reaches that cap. Is he stuck? Or what you're saying is we'll look at that cap at that time? Well, I think that's what we have to do. I know from my, and I have to, I like to reflect back a lot of time in my private business. You know, I have to absorb a lot of uh, commodity increases, the price that those commodities cost me to put in a system, for example. I can't always, because of the market, pass that, that, that cost on to my customer. So I begin to absorb a lot of that. And I absorb it, and I have no other option where I have to then pull the trigger and make a decision of what am I going to do. Do I find another supplier, or do I go up on my rate? So uh, that's just business. I think that's part of what they're going to have to do. Right. I think that's, that's recognized as a but I think it's also important to acknowledge that even in the worst way, our land was there at the cheapest rate in this area. To be honest with you, this place is $60 a ton, $80 a ton, I mean, all day long. Any other things you want us to discuss on uh, solid waste? So, that goal has been accomplished. And I'm very, very proud of that. It took a lot of hot, heavy lifting. It took heavy lifting by staff, certainly, and by the commission as well. How many years, Commissioner Evans? Uh, Ten years?
support this service based on revenue that will be collected from the ministry and services in the unincorporated Lane County. At this point, staff has prepared information for the commission uh, to review during the budgeting process related to this code, and include the budget impact, feasibility, and the process of implementation. <coughs> the current status, additional information is available for your review. You will find it inside the pack here. Staff has compiled a proposed budget for revenue and expenditure production based on the 2016 utilization in the unincorporated area and the number of staff needed to take the service in house. Now, as a point of discussion, um, th this has been an issue that I have put in play uh, for the last four years to begin to continue to look at this. And finally, we put it at a short term goal to go ahead and move in that direction to look and see what the feasibility is. Um, I don't want to throw, I'm not here to throw anybody under the bus or anything like that. I just want to tell you what I hear in the, in the contracting world. Um, our concern, or my concern that I have is, is that currently where we're at in the process that we have in place to serve the contractors and the citizens in Lowndes County has become somewhat cumbersome. There have been uh, some groups that has, have, have, been, have taken a look at this. The Chamber Sort Committee has looked at some issues through the, the uh, plan review process, the permitting, fee structures, and all of those things that's what it, what it cost a contractor to do business in Lambs County. I do think also that it's a serious issue that we need to look at from an economic development standpoint. You can get a reputation as a community that you are hard to do business with. I do know that there are some communities that do things a little bit different. I can't say that one's any better or one's any worse. I just do know that from contractors that have spoken to me, there are some communities that they go into and in order to permit a project, that process is much simpler much smoother, much easier to get a permit so that they can go to construction. This is not a hit on the inspections, on the inspectors, or on staff, or anything like that. It's more or less looking at the process that we currently have. Is there a way that this can be improved? Uh, as y'all all know, uh, currently we allow the city of Alabasta to do inspections in the unincorporated area, which is what they do. The process is, is that do we, do we want to consider looking at Lowndes County doing the inspections in the unincorporated areas? Uh, I think that there could be some benefits that could come out of it. I think the benefits could be the fact that you, that I believe in our management style and what I have heard from folks in from sorts and different ones is that through our uh, planning and zoning department, there's absolutely no problem whatsoever. That process is smooth, that process is clean, that process is quick. The problem becomes is once it leaves out and moves to the next level. Now, if we took the whole process from the unincorporated areas and consolidated it into one office for, for citizens that wanted to permit construction in the unincorporated area that they had one location to come to, do that entire process, a one-stop shop that you had, one permitting, one plan to do process, and you're done, would that be better serving the citizens in the unincorporated areas? Well, I think it's something that definitely has to be looked at and it's something that needs to be considered. Is it a step that we want to go into? That's, that's going to be the results of the discussion uh, as we move forward. But there are, some, there are some issues. I am totally and completely convinced that that as much as anything, it, it, it is an economic development issue. 
because you truly can get the reputation of being a community that's hard to deal with from the standpoint of permitting the planning review process and what have you. Um, I know that the, the current Valoxy City Inspection Department, Community Service Department, they have worked hard on trying to improve that process. Um, they have been very responsive to the concerns that's out there. Uh, but to me, playing with you, taking anywhere from 21 days to then getting it into 21 days and then hunting for another 21, 30 days, and sometimes you even hear five and six months before you can get the plan actually through plan review. To me, that is totally and completely unacceptable for a community. There should be a straightforward, clean process. You take a plan, you review it, and then you get it perfect. There are communities that are the size of how and in Lance County that does the plan review process, not saying all projects, but a lot of the projects, they do plan review, permitting, process all within a 24 hour period. That's strong. And that's, that, that is something that you know, my concern is and why I've, I've had this as a short term goal and I want to continue to keep it there. Continue. We've now got some some financial information, we've got some staffing information that will help us be able to make a decision. Do we do it today? Do we do it next year, the year after? I think it's something that now needs to move forward that we've got this supporting information that we need to take some serious consideration if we want to move in that direction. That's my speech on that. So I'll leave it to y'all to think about it. I'll leave it to you to make some comments on or uh, whatever you thought. It is Do this, what will be that impact? That's something that definitely we've got to be considered. 
Um, and so um, we now have some information that we can begin to make that decision of do we want to move in that direction. Um, and, and we may not, you know, and when I say may not, I'm being op optimistic that the process that's currently in place could change, but it's going to take somebody that's willing to recognize the fact that there is a problem. Everybody looks at it right now that there is no problem. What's wrong with the way we're doing it? Well, there's a lot wrong with the way it's getting done, and it needs to be fixed. And as Scotty said, you know, we, the industry said, well, if we get a new director, maybe it's all going to get back. Well, we've got a, we, we no longer have that director. We don't necessarily have a new director, but we don't, nothing's any better. And I really don't believe that it's going to get a lot better. It goes back to any time they're, you know, monopoly, they're, they're the only game they have. So why do they need to get better? Right. There's two, they probably, it seems like it probably get better by itself. I mean, honestly, I mean, just because of the competition. Yeah. But, well, I think the city does on its, let me say this. The inspection department that we currently have is a top-notch inspection department. You won't find one any better. Um, they're very professional. They go by the code books, and that's but that's the way it should be. But it's the processes that's in place, and, it, and it's kind of like some another another analogy that we might touch on. Is it's, it's like the issue with the emergency room in the hospital. The problem is not getting the service that you get in the hospital, the problem is getting into the hospital through the ER. Well, it's the same thing with the inspection department. The problem is not getting your jobs inspected, calling and somebody coming and inspecting the job, doing it according to code and checking to make sure that the citizens are getting the product that they should get. The process is ever getting from the time you step in the door to get that permit to where you can start building the project. That's where the problem, the problem is. So those are the issues that I feel like that are of the utmost importance and certainly that comes with an economic development tool. Now you can put your blinders on and say that it's not a problem, but I'm convinced that it's a problem. But one thing you have to realize, I think you're going to continue to see that we have had complaints from someone about that department. So if you keep hearing complaints about the same thing, there has to be a problem. But the folks in that department has got to recognize that there is a problem. They can't just keep saying we don't have a problem. We're as good as, as it is. And that's that's just not where we're at right now. And I guess if the county, if the county decides to do this and get to a point where you, know, you you go in and take the proposal to the county and we get back to you in three days and it's approved, where if you didn't take the same proposal to the city that takes you three weeks. Yeah, they all, they all, well, you, you know, it's just going to be, it's going to be some push. They've got to get better on their own. So, I mean, it's, it's just anything, anything when you have a lack of competition, anything when you take the market out of something, that it's just. Well, that process, I mean, to get there, and let me, let me clarify one other thing that I've always said, and I've told my contractor friends this. I don't think that we need to have a community that has to inspection. I think we need as much as anything is that this is an option of last report recourse, you might say. If we can find a way that we can work with our local inspection department and, and can truly convince them that there's an issue there that needs to be addressed, that's the direction we need to go with. It's much easier for a business to come into a community and go to one point and get everything that they need to get done but we've got a problem here that we as county commissioners really have very little input into the direction that it goes in, how it's managed, and what's happening. So if we can find a way, or if they can open that door to where they can say, we'll listen to you and we'll begin to make some of these changes. Well, like I say, before you can make a change, you've got to recognize you've got a problem. And all the discussions I've been in, that's the direction it's going in. They can't recognize that they've got a problem. Just not right. So that's kind of where I'm at with right now. Uh, again, we're not ready to to do anything with that. We just we've got some supportive information now that you can continue to look at, and then we'll have some more open stuff discussions on that we would call.
That was out of those discussions. Leave it on your short-term notes. Leave it on there. We're not ready to do anything with it at this time. And there's a chat out for it whenever he gets here. A little later on, he has a report for you all. Okay. So, okay. <clears throat> I think, let, let me say this. I, maybe, maybe this is where we need to go with it so we can kind of be comfortable. I'm willing to take part in a meeting with the community development director to sit down at the table with him and say, listen, here are our areas of concerns. You tell me why we can't do it this way or see if we can improve these issues. Let's make an effort to see if we can improve what we currently have. But I'll be honest with you, I mean, it's going to take somebody, I believe, like the commission to make that happen. The other areas have tried, private contractors have tried, chamber has tried, there's been some improvements, but it always just kind of falls back to where it's at. I think if we can work with them to come up with an agreement on the processes and how that's going to be done, I think the bad better off. I don't mind saying you know, our success a lot of times is sitting down and trying to work out those things don't necessarily come out well, but you've got to sit down and work it out. Or sit down and try. Try. <laughs> try. 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 <laughs> okay? So maybe we can make that part of the short term goal, Mr. Wisenbeck, if you wanted to do that, is that we move into discussion to the community development part, the part of the city of Alabama and improve it. And I'm saying primarily the planning process. Mr. Contractor, would that be fair enough? <laughs> so we're going to leave that as a short term goal and we will add um, the moving discussion to the junior development department on improvements in um, county I knew what we're going to do in the city, we just want to have to do it different again. That's right. Permitting. In the unincorporated. Is that the combined permitting and inspection? It's the same. It's all the same. It's the same. All right. Uh, third item is uh, was that has been accomplished with the referendum allowing voters to determine that the Board of Assessors should be appointed or continue to be elected. As prepared the necessary documents to place that question on the next countywide election, uh, which was should the citizens <coughs> have to get to that point. But yes, as everybody knows, it was um, placed on the ballot. It was approved uh, by the citizens of Lowndes County that in 2020, you will have the opportunity as a commission to appoint the tax assessor for Lowndes County. Very tight part of it. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of things that's a lot tighter than that. The reality is that, that means that at least 50% of the people in this community want to go in another direction. That's what we need. So now we're on the other hand.
continue to expand it. Uh, and I think that it's something that we can continue to look at. Animal safety and animal welfare for the citizens and for the animals is extremely important. But I think you have to kind of be that elephant a little bit a bite at a time. You can't just gobble it all up. So we've got to be careful about how we move forward with those next uh, issues and, uh, and address them. But again, great job. Uh, again, an accomplished goal that got taken place, got done. So we, uh, we'll move forward with that. Okay, establish the plan for the efforts aimed at reducing the amount of litter in an unincorporated Lance County to include a beautification plan for identified areas. Direct the county manager to establish, a, to establish a litter and beautification task force and provide the staff response for daily services affected by this issue. The task force should be charged with evaluating current issues and recommending options for decreasing the amount of litter in the unincorporated Lance County over the next 12 months. In addition, the task force should identify and research funding options to improve strategic locations for beautification projects for inclusion in the current budget process. Uh, over the past year, Lance County Public Works and Code Enforcement have put measures in place to track the amount of trash, litter, illegal dumping, etc. collected in the unincorporated areas of Lance County. Most recently, the county and the cities came together for a community planning meeting and identified litter and gateway improvement as a collective for priority. Staff is in the process of finalizing the committee with representatives from each local government in an effort to identify the issues and account for problem areas for the purpose of drafting a community-wide plan to address this goal. Uh, most recently, Lounge County has partnered with GDOT to improve gateways and exit ramps in addition to increasing project funding to keep Lounge Valdos to view. Now, with that said, uh, this effort has got a lot of moving parts and pieces to it. Um, with House Bill 170, the Department of Transportation now has some more revenue that they are have access to to be able to do a better job of what they should do from the standpoint of their mowings around the exits. You've seen, uh, as we mentioned, a tremendous amount of work that's being done right now on I-75 specifically around the exits with trimming and some of them though they trim them right on down to the dirt. You know what I mean? So whatever their whatever their goal is there is again is to work through. I have been told that they want to they want to make sure that the gateway into the state of Georgia coming up I-75 from the state of Florida uh, is is a nice looking gateway. And I can't agree with you. I mean, it's no different than we, the property owners, you want your home, you want your drive, you want some things to look neat, curb appeal. And I do believe that Valdosta and Lambs County uh, needed some curb appeal. And that's a little bit about what this is. Uh, we're, we'll have some reports and some more information at a later time uh, during the meeting that will provide some information on, on the contract with, with GDOT to do some additional mowings around the exits. I think that that's our first focus. Uh, I think it's important that as we talk about loss a good bit, that's, there's a tremendous amount of loss revenue that is coming up and down I-75 every day. And when you don't look like an inviting community from your front door for those people, they're going to move on. They're going to go down and they'll drive another 15 or 20 miles for the next time <coughs> to see, you know, to, make, to, to stop and spend, eat, spend the night, shop, be in the restaurant, whatever the case might be. So uh, I'm glad that the state is, is or making the effort to make some improvements, but I think that we have an opportunity as well, working with GDOT, to actually improve it even more to make it even a more of a finish. Uh, appearance at the exit. And uh, we have that opportunity and we'll be getting some information on that. But um, I think that uh, I think that, that process is already in place. Uh, at the end of the day when all the pieces kind of begin to mesh together, we'll see what it looks like as we move on. I think that this needs to be, in my opinion, needs to be as a continued 
short-term goal of something that we can continue to monitor on a yearly basis. Um, and again, as, as it is with anything, we may end up with, as we talked about, maybe the need for some educational aspects in it for the citizens. Uh, some people just need to relearn the fact that you don't throw trash out the window. I and mean, they just need to relearn that. And we, we may need to look at that. But I think it's important. It's important for this community that it looks as good as it can. Uh, is, it, is it totally and completely the job of local government to make sure that gets done? I firmly believe that it is not. I think it is an effort that provides that the entire community has to buy into the fact that you want, that you want your front door to look good. And I think that that's where we're at. That situation is going to break and improve with these four exits, sir. Remodeling, remodeling. Hey, Hay Highway, North Valdosta Road, Madison Highway, and Bellville Highway. So that's going to take care of all of this. I don't think we need to spend a lot of money on, on the litter control program. A little bit of money like this. This is sad. I saw this on Alexander Street when I went out there looking at 13 acres. You don't see these very often. Shouldn't be a big expense to put some of these up just in certain areas just to try to see if this has an impact. And it can be attached to a speed limit sign, evidently. Yeah. That's the educational portion. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. So that should be very cost effective. Now we said by the way, hope and there are of course, several reasons for cutting down a lot of the trees and all. But um, one of the main reasons when it's time to maintain stuff like that, you ain't got to sit in zero turns out there to go around the trees and weeds and everything else. You can just send a tractor and it goes back and forth. And it's, it's not easy to maintain um, everything. Because a lot of times we got a bunch of stuff out there. Well, so let, let, me, let me be real clear on so, so that everybody knows where I'm at with it. From my standpoint of beautification, beautification doesn't necessarily mean divide the highway and <coughs> plant flower beds and finish grass and all that. What mine means is pick up the trash, leave it as an invited, inviting uh, community. Uh, we had gotten to a point where, to where our exits really were just atrocious. I mean, people were living in the in the shrubs and the bushes and camping out on the side of the interstate in one sense because the habitat was there for them. And so by cleaning those things up and lifting them up and managing it better than what we were doing, that makes for a much more of an inviting front door into this community. And I think that, that that's really what my perspective is at this time right now. I'm not talking about a ton of tubes, not what I'm looking for. If you've got uh, if you've got the community civic groups in this community that wants to adopt a corner or something that wants to improve it, hey, I'm all for it. Again, that could be part of the process and some of our community involvement. But for the local government to go out and start doing that, it's not just a matter of getting a grant to go and plant flowers. It's a matter of then how are you going to maintain them after you plant them, uh, and that can be expensive. But but certainly. Our effort needs to be is, is, is that whatever we can do to make our community as inviting and as clean as we can possibly do it, I think we have a certain amount of obligation to do that. Probably. There's one other thing we can do. We can uh, dress Commissioner Marshall up in a litter bug suit <laughs> and let him go to the schools to entertain the children and teach them about litter. Yeah. And you know, another thing. Uh, on the spirit note is, and I think you you hit it an important point. Uh, it, it's good to have flowers and trees, but I think some people need to know it's, it's a right tree or whatever to put in a certain area. And some areas we just got stuff just to say we got stuff. Loaded, no way. Loaded, and at the end of the day, it didn't like us. It's good to have nice bones and everything. I like the real conservative blue, more so than I just flowers. Anything else on the All right, it is 12-15. Uh, we are actually running behind.
So let's break right there, if you would, and we'll take a, probably a 30 minute recess for lunch. Is that enough for everybody? Bye,